All right, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be going through the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin. We did see a wild flash crash of about 87% yesterday, just briefly down to 8,200. So we're gonna be going through exactly what happened, why it happened, you know, just so you know all about that. We'll also be going through some bullish news, some bearish news, what's happening on the charts and some places where I've been taking profits and where I'm looking to make those sweet, sweet games. Now, if you don't know me already, my name's Connor. And of course I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy sitting in a room in Spain talking about different ways to make money online. So if you like that sort of thing, please consider smashing that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and leave me a little comment down in the comment section and tell me your favorite country on earth. And maybe one day I'll try and travel there and maybe meet one of you guys out there. So without wasting any more of your time, I'd say let's jump onto my computer, but we're already on it. And today let's talk quickly about that Bitcoin flash crash. So it happened on Binance US and was caused by an algorithmic bug says the exchange. So the price of Bitcoin crashed to $8,200. We can see the chart here. Pretty wild, right? And basically what they said happened was just a mistake, a bug in the exchange, but it did actually happen very briefly. I did see some orders being filled. If you managed to get some orders filled on Bitcoin, congratulations. Just absolutely wild chance. But also this would have stopped out some people, which is a bit annoying, you know? So one of our institutional traders indicated to us that they had a bug on their trading algorithm, which appears to have caused the sell-off. Finance US said in a statement shared with Bloomberg, we are continuing to look into the event, but understand from the trader that they have now fixed their bug and that issue appears to have been resolved. So hopefully that sort of thing won't happen again. But if you do see the headlines saying that Bitcoin crashed 87%, you know exactly what happened. It was just a bug. It basically didn't happen. It was a blip on the radar nothing to worry about over there now if we just move over here let's talk about some pumpy pumpy mcgood news right so we have walmart with 200 bitcoin atms this seems to have completely flown under the radar because of yesterday what happened uh bitcoin crashing and all of that but binance has bitcoin atms now 200 of them which is absolutely incredible this is the beginning of mass adoption i'm telling you guys i genuinely believe that we are at the very beginning now things are wild of course our portfolios are moving like crazy but i genuinely think that the mass adoption starts now i don't think that we're anywhere near you know the top of what happens with crypto. Maybe we're at the local top like we saw a few months ago and a few years ago. We could potentially be in a dead cat bounce right now, a double top, that sort of thing. We could go down from here. That's always a possibility. But I personally have this long-term mindset when it comes to crypto. So I'm not worried about what happens in the short term. I'm here to make as much crypto as possible. I actually haven't traded crypto into fiat in years. I did one test on uh, the Binance P2P exchange. Uh, I took money out to test that it worked, put that in my bank account, but I've not taken out any money since 2017. I've only put some money in during that long bear pe period, and then I've just been stacking that crypto. So moving on, we do have Spanish banks are where we are right now, offering cryptocurrency services to their customers, and then making arrangements with the upcoming regulations. So they're planning to give cryptocurrency to their customers in Spain. Absolutely incredible. Another country, another step in the right direction. And then we also have some big news. AMC accepts Dogecoin and it could soon launch its own crypto. So a huge brand like AMC, which isn't, you know, the biggest uh, cinema chain out there, but it has so much immediate attention, a media, media attention because of what happened, you know, about six or seven months ago with that GameStop and the AMC pumps. You got Nokia pumping and all of those, all of those old, all of those stocks were pumping. So it has a lot of media attention and a lot of retail traders involved in it. So if they launch their own crypto, this again is just good for the media attention. We want the media on our side, but do remember they can flip at any moment. So let's just quickly check out the Bitcoin chart. I have this. We right now have the four hour chart open. I drew this line. As you know, I'm not really a TA guy. I do use it myself to find buy and sell points, but I don't really talk about it too much because I'm much more about the fundamentals, especially in this market that is crazy manipulated. My thought process behind that, because of the manipulation, when you're following trends, they are great to find your entries and your exits, but 
I believe that people who are manipulating the market are actually going against these trends. So they see these sorts of trends happening. They know where traders are going to be putting in their longs or their shorts and things like that. And then they're going to do the opposite. So they trick retail investors out of their money. So that's why I don't like to talk about it too much. But right now we are seeing a test of this trend line. So this is the four hour chart and this is the pump that we have been seeing in Bitcoin. And right now we have that pullback that we saw last night from about the 66 or $67,000 mark. And right now we are bang on this trend line. So what I was saying recently is I can easily see a pullback to Bitcoin to around, I think what it was, was 60 or maybe 59,000, sorry to waste your time, um, here. So if we check out this, I would see easily a pullback to where we were. This is what I was saying yesterday. And then potentially down to as low as about 57 and a half thousand. You can see there's massive amounts of support around this region. So I personally wouldn't be concerned if that happened. Don't worry about the noise outside. But I personally wouldn't be concerned too much if that happened. I wouldn't be panicking anything thing like that. But something to watch if you are doing some short term trades is if we don't hold this trend line, we actually break through it. You see how we're sitting right on it. If we do start to trend downwards, this could potentially cause a short term bear trend in the market. So if you are doing short term trading, I'm not doing that. But if you are doing that, that is definitely something to pay attention to. Now, one thing that's looking very bullish for us, because you obviously we are altcoin degens. We love our altcoins. We do hold some Bitcoin, of course. I hold some Bitcoin because I love it, but we're going to see the most amount of gains in altcoins. And what we're seeing in the Bitcoin dominance chart is that we are having a pullback. This is very good. What we want to start to see is some lower lows here in the Bitcoin dominance chart. And what this basically means is money's flowing from Bitcoin into the altcoin. So what I'm seeing in the new near term is these larger cap altcoins absolutely pumping. We haven't seen any mad moves in these larger cap altcoins recently. I do think we could see Cardano easily back over $3. Solana has been moving. We got 5% on the day and almost 30% on the week, but nothing too crazy. As you can see, we haven't had any crazy moves in the larger cap altcoins. And this is what I'm going to see and what I expect to see in the coming days or weeks. I do genuinely think my Money's going to flow from Bitcoin into these altcoins. And then hopefully what we get is mass retail FOMO. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, we have been building our portfolio over the last, let's say, six months. During that whole bear trend, we were building up our portfolio. We were doing some trades. We were stacking as much as we possibly could. So right now we could take advantage of what is potentially about to happen. Now, if you want to stay up to date when I make any trades, that's buying and selling. You come join the Patreon. There's a link down there in my description. Not only do you get access to my my trades, but also you get access to that awesome community. Trust me, it's my favorite place in the crypto space right now. So if you do want to come over and join, there's a link down there. And if you absolutely hate it, you can just send me a DM and I'll refund your money. So this is what I'm seeing. Large cap altcoins are going to pump. Now, I've said this so many times, we need to find new projects on these ecosystems. Solana, Cardano, Kusama, Polkadot when it releases its parachains. Those are the places we're going to see crazy gains. So for me, I have the majority of my money in these larger cap altcoins, and then I save some cash for these smaller caps. Now, within the Moon River network, I've been speaking about this on the channel for a while. I did find a few decentralized exchanges. We jumped into them. We jumped out of them all in order to build as much of our base level portfolio as possible. Recently, I did talk about this Huckleberry Finn decentralized exchange. I took some profits off this yesterday. We had a little bit of a pullback. I think it briefly touched about the $2 range. I took some profits at around 175 just to secure the gains we made. We actually got in to Finn at 16 cents. So we saw a 10x on Finn. I took profits when we did about a 5x. Now I've taken some more profits at 10x. So that is an example of my game plan. When I see crazy exponential growth in these, you know, smaller, tiny market cap coins, the market cap of Finn right now is $4 million. I could easily see this hit 20 million. You know, for example, we saw that with the Moon Swap uh, decentralized exchange on Moon River. So I could easily see this do another four or five X, but the key, in my opinion, to a good cryptocurrency plan is not being greedy. There's two keys, not being greedy and not chasing pumps. We buy things early and we take profits and not be greedy. I see there to be a four or five X left in Finn, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to take some profits. I'm going to secure them into some stable coins and uh, 
increase my bag of moon river. That's the uh, ecosystem this is built on. So that's an example of my plan. Now, let's just quickly talk about some of the not so bullish ideas in the market right now. So if we do go, I got a chart up, here we go. So this is a chart of a market cycle, right? So we've got two real options as to where we could be right now. Me personally, I think we're here, a bear trap. We saw a pullback yesterday. We saw some people panic. This is the end, all of that sort of stuff. But then we now, this morning, have seen a nice little pump in the overall market, right? We're down, but we have been seeing this sort of thing happen right here. So I think we're here, but we could potentially be in a similar scenario to this. So this was April. Here we are now. This would be more like a double top up here, but we could potentially be in this return to normal phase. Then we move into fear, capitulation, despair, and then return to the mean, as you can see back here in early 2020 would be. So those are the options. This is the bear case scenario and definitely a possibility. So again, this is the reason why I take profits, me personally, because we can't tell the future. We have no way of guaranteeing which space we're in. So we got to hedge our bets. Now, talking about hedging your bets, you know, I often talk about BlockFi. This is where I stake my long-term crypto. So I've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USDT over here on BlockFi, and this generates me a passive income. So this is one of my favorite places to store my crypto. So you can store your crypto on a place like this, or you could store your crypto on something like a ledger, right? This is a hardware wallet that's not connected to anything. You can take it with you. Personally, I keep some of my crypto here on BlockFi. I stake it and I get returns. Like, look at this, returns on USDT stable coins of 8%. That's unheard of in the real banking market. And of course, we've got Bitcoin and Ethereum at 5% and 4.5%. So this is what I personally do. And if you fancy signing up to this, there is a link down there in the description and you can get up to a 250 $50 bonus if you do follow that link. So if you fancy it, it is down there. So moving on to a little bit more of our FUD that we have in the market, we are seeing leverage building in the long market. So we're seeing more and more leverage enter the market for expecting the price to go up. Now, this often leads to a correction. It's a classic indicator of a correction when the majority of retail investors think we are going to be long. So we're going to go up in price. That is normally the opposite that could happen. Now, this can happen at any moment. We could still get to 100K and then come down. That's what I would think would happen. But again, we could see a 20, 30, 40% crash at any moment. I do think that's highly possible. Personally, I think we've got a long way to go in this current bull phase, but definitely something to consider. And just to close off the video, let's check out the fear and greed index. We are now in greed. So we are down a little bit from yesterday where we were in extreme greed. This is definitely something I like to see. Obviously, Bitcoin has pulled back. The market is a little bit fearful. So this makes people, you know, a little less greedy, which is a good thing. I would love for this to come back down to the neutral level. That would make me feel more secure that we aren't going to have any big pullbacks because when people are too greedy, when the mass of people are too greedy. Nearly always we see a pullback. Just to quickly pull up the historical data of the greed and fear index, you can see every time we cross this, this 70, 80, 90 region of the greed and fear index, we do have a pullback. So keep that in mind. Stay safe. Come up with your game plan. Zoom out, chill out, all of that sort of good stuff. And I'll see you guys back in Dubai on Monday. Peace. Whoosh.